Well, good morning. Um, right about now, I am probably at my son's graduation uh, down in Texas. So hopefully you're uh, having a good day and hopefully yesterday's lesson went well. I'll be back Monday if you have any questions, but let's just go through uh, the two even problems from last night. So 26, it was uh, less than four. So that means the radius has to be less than two. So this picture, let me turn my pad on here. So this picture, the dotted part would be exactly a radius of two. So we want the points that would have a radius of one or a half or one and a half, which is why it's shaded on the inside. Number uh, 44, yeah, 44 was different than the one uh, we did together yesterday because this was y is equal to and it's negative square root. So the square root part can't be negative. It can be zero or positive. So this means your answer has to be either zero or negative. So y either moves up or down. So we want the points that are negative for y, which means you're only having the bottom half of the circle, not the entire circle and not the top half. Yesterday we did one where I think it was uh, the right half. All right, so if you take out the note sheet for today, uh, hopefully the substitute has passed that out. If not, uh, you can just ask uh, for that sheet. So what we're going to talk about today are some more problems with circles where the radius and center is not quite as easy to identify. So the directions for number one say find the center and radius of this circle. We learned how to complete the square uh, a few months ago. What we're going to do in this section and a lot the rest of this chapter is use complete the square. And in these, we're actually going to complete the square twice. So the first thing I want to do is rearrange it put the x terms together, put the y terms together, and move the 6 over to the other side. So I'll write x squared minus 6x. I'll leave a little bit of space to complete the square. Plus y squared plus 2y. Leave a little bit of space equals negative 6. So I just subtracted the 6. So then I just complete the square differently with each. So if I just had the x's, half of 6, again, we can take half of the middle is 3. 3 squared is 9, so I'm going to add 9 here. I can't just add 9 because I feel like it. I have to also add 9 over here. Now I'll do the y's. Half of 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1, so I'm going to add 1 here and add 1 here. The left, the x's, turns into a perfect square trinomial. That's the whole point of it. That's why it's called completing the square. Plus, and then this grouping here, so you can sort of think of it as two groupings. You don't have to write that, but you can put them in groupings. I think the book uh, does write them as groupings if you're looking at the book. Uh, let me just look real quick. Um, yeah, they do put them in parentheses. It really doesn't matter. So this would uh, factor as the quantity of y plus 1 squared. On the right side, uh, we get 3 plus 1 is 4. So the directions here just say find the center and radius. So my center would be, again, the opposite. So 3 minus 3 would give you the zero here. So this would be three comma negative one. And my radius is the square root of that number. So my radius would be two. The next two we're going to graph, we're going to use the same technique here. So go ahead and put the 22 uh, in there. So you can go ahead and try to complete the square on your own. You can pause this, go ahead and try it, and then restart the video. So I am putting, uh, rearranging it again, putting the x terms together, uh, plus y squared minus 2y equals negative 22. I'm going to uh, take half of 8 is 4, 4 squared is 16. I'll add 16 over here. This grouping then, I'm going to take half of negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is always positive, so I'm going to add 1 here. All right, so now I'll... Um, Factor this is a perfect square trinomial. Gives me the quantity of x plus 4 squared plus the quantity of y minus 1 squared. Negative 22 plus 16, this is make the 17. Negative 22 plus 17 gives me negative 5. All right, so my radius here would be the square root of negative 5, which would be imaginary and we don't graph imaginary numbers. So this has no graph. So that's all we have to do here. We're not, even though it says the graph, we don't have to graph because it doesn't have a graph because you can't have a radius uh, that would come from a negative number here. All right, number three. When I look at this one, 
it doesn't have a middle term for the x. So I have x squared plus nothing. So that's really already finished. So plus y squared minus 4y. I'll move the 5. I always move the 5. Some people like to like try to like calculate what it would have to be to make a, a perfect square. What would I add here and here? I just think that's too much thinking. Um, it winds up wasting me time, honestly, than just adding the 5. So here I will add uh, half of 2 is uh, half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So I wind up with x squared plus the quantity. So I'm just, again, you don't have to put the parentheses here, but just to show what's happening, I'm factoring this trinomial. So this would be the quantity of y minus 2 squared equals 9. So my center is 0, comma 2, and my radius is 3. So I'll just start by putting a dot at 0, 2. Now that's the center, you can draw that. That's technically not part of this. Uh, uh, it's not the circle. The circle are the points that are uh, three inches from there. But you can always just put a dot at the center. Uh, so from there, I go three in every direction. So three up, three to the left, three down, and three to the right. If you are in class, um, I have... Graph paper, I think you all know where the graph paper is. You can just uh, get a stack uh, for your homework tonight. If you're at home, uh, you know where the link is for uh, printing that. All right, so that's, uh, did we complete the directions? The directions just said uh, graph. So we found the center and the radius. All right, number four, if you look at the second page of the note sheet, we need to learn a new vocabulary word. So a tangent line in geometry is a line that just touches a circle at one point. And then a property of that is any line that goes through the center of the circle is going to be perpendicular to the tangent line at the point of tangency. So let's draw a picture here. You can draw the tangent line anywhere, but so this line would not be tangent because it hits in two places. All of these would hit in two places. This doesn't hit at all. Now you can't say that this is tangent because it hits in one point because it has to be a line. So we have to say, well, if it were to keep going, it would hit in two places. So a point, a line, uh, a tangent line would look more something like this. Let me try to use this so it looks a little better. So a tangent line might look something like that. So it's going to hit the circle. It's going to in, it's going to intersect the circle in just one point. So that's the point of tangency. The center of the circle is right here. And what we just said that if I were to draw any line, let's use this again just so it looks better, that goes through the center to the point of tangency, if I were to keep going here, you can just have a radius. It's the same thing because it's part of that line. So I'll just draw a diameter, but it really doesn't matter. But what we just learned is if I were to draw that, this is always going to make a right angle. So that's going to give me my radius. So the radius of the circle is the point from here to here. And that would be, like I said, that would be the radius would be this part um, right here, just from here to here. All right, so find an equation of a circle that has radius four, that has its center in the second quadrant and is tangent to the x-axis at the point negative six zero. All right, a lot going on there. I'm going to draw a rough picture. This is just to help me see what's happening. So obviously this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two. So you could have four different circles that have this property, but only one that would be in the second quadrant. So find an equation of a, a circle with radius four that has its center in the second quadrant and is tangent to the x-axis at the point negative six zero. Okay, so here's my x-axis. My point of tangency is negative six zero. You don't have to, this is just a rough picture to help you, but this is my point of tangency right here. Let's just imagine that that's negative six zero. The radius is four. So that means that from here to the center, it's gotta be perpendicular again. Um, so this point here, if I were to draw in the radius here, 
that's going to have a radius of four. So my circle, we're six over to the left. So if I were to draw my circle, it would not hit the y-axis. So let me just draw this in blue here. I'll just do the best I can with this. So uh, again, not beautiful, but getting a little better. So there's my circle. So I just need two things. I need the radius and I need the center. So the center here, if I'm at negative six, zero, and I go straight up, my x value, I would still go negative six. So my x coordinate of my uh, center is still negative six. I would go up four. So that would be four. So my center is negative six, four. My radius is four. The direction say to write an equation. So it would just be the quantity of x plus six squared plus the quantity of y minus four squared equals 16. And that would be my equation. All right, last question is similar to what we did yesterday uh, with inequalities. So let's complete the square here like we've been doing so far today. I'll rearrange the term so I put the x's together, leave a little bit of space. And you can pause this if you want to try this. Uh, try doing this on your own. Leave a little bit of space, and it's less than 7. Let me just slide this out of the way a little bit. I will add half of 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4. Half of negative 10 is negative 5, negative 5 squared is 25. I'll add 25. So again, this quantity and this quantity. So this would give me x plus 2 quantity squared plus the quantity of y minus 5 squared. And this is less than uh, 11 and 25 would be 36. So my radius, if this was an equation, I would draw a circle that had a radius of exactly 6. So I want my radius to be less then six. I'm looking for all the points, the directions say to graph this, so I'm looking for all the points that have a radius that's less than six. So my center is negative two, five, so let's graph that. Negative two, five. From there, I'm going to uh, draw points in all four directions that would be exactly six. So again, I'm up five, so down one, I'm gonna go a little past. Uh, so to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, up six, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and um, probably should have picked a different number, but you don't have to change your scale just because that doesn't fit. Just um, you can extend it up uh, past your graph. I think we did that earlier in the year for something like that. And then six to the left would be here. Now that would be a circle that would be exactly a radius of six. So just like yesterday, I'm going to draw a dotted line. Now if it was equal to then I would make the solid line, just like we did with uh, inequalities with graphing lines. All right, and I want all the radii oop, that are uh, less than six. So just like you had uh, yesterday, let me try to make this look a little better. So I'm looking for the points that are inside the circle. Make sure you shade under here, make sure it's clear, but just shade inside the circle, and that would be my graph. All right, the homework is listed here uh, on the same section, finishing circles. So hopefully you can finish most, if not all of that in class, and have a great weekend. I will see you on Monday.